Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Danielle with Dan Fancy Creations, and today I'm going to show you guys how I do my serape and cowhide tumbler with a double sided tape. If you like this video, hit subscribe. So, this is the tumbler we're going to be making. This was the very first one I made and decided to keep a few years ago. The very first thing that you want to do is obviously sand your cup really well, prep it. I like to use matte white paint by Rust-Oleum, and get your double-sided tape ready. I use the 3M brand. It's just what I like better. It seems to be really sticky, and I get different sizes. I usually go with two, three, four five and six millimeters just so you have a little bit of size variation in your design so the first thing you're going to do is start at the very top and just start placing it um, pretty close to the rim but not super close because I do go back and dremel my top rims so it will take off you know about two millimeters and you don't really want it tearing up the tape when you go to dremel so you just try to wrap it around pretty evenly from the top And when you get to the other side, you're going to overlap it just a little bit. So you're going to cut your tape to where it overlaps the other end just slightly. So then what we're going to do is peel up the backing on the other side and we are going to lay the other piece down on top of it. So peel that up so it exposes the sticky, then push that side down, and then lay the backing back down on the other one. So this way, when you go to peel your tape, it just comes off in one continuous strip, and the sticky goes all the way around the cup. So I'm going to show you guys how I do that a couple more times and then we are going to speed up the video just to save time because it's kind of boring to watch somebody tape an entire cup. So just place that tape as close as you can get it to the tape above it and then overlap just a little bit. And then peel up the backing on that one side Lay this one down, and then press the backing back down. And you guys can also see that I stagger my tape lines. I do that so that when I am pouring glitter on, um, it kind of helps with, you know, getting the wrong glitter under the tape below it, if that makes sense. And I don't really pick my tape widths in any particular order. Um, I do thick, thin, thick, thin, then maybe two thick lines and two thin lines. No rhyme or reason. So one last time to show you guys. We're going to peel up the backing on this one side. 
press the other one down on top and then lay the backing back down. So now it's really awkward to hold a cup like this and tape, so I'm going to put it in my lap like I usually do and we are going to speed things up just a little bit. And you guys will be able to see that I don't really go in any particular order like I mentioned. I just kind of grab whatever tape I grab and then just wrap it around. And. Um, like I've mentioned before, if I'm doing prints or, you know, patterns, I try to look at, um, you know, real print. So for this one, for example, I just went to Google and found a really pretty, like, Serape blanket that I liked. And then I just kind of recreated that pattern with colors onto the cup. So just varying in thicknesses. And, you know, I know a lot of people have done similar things like this and they don't necessarily use different sizes. And you don't have to if you don't want to. If you just want to, you know, buy one size for now just to try it out because they can be expensive. I think they're about 6 or $7 per roll. Um, so if you have five different sizes, then that can be, that can get a little bit pricey. So... It still looks pretty good if you just use one or two different sizes. So after you tape everything, we will be ready to glitter. And so my Serape cup, I always use the same colors. So I just lay out the glitter colors in the order that they will go on the cup. And I do always try to start with the darker colors. So if there are two colors next to each other and one is dark and one is light, I will always do the darkest one first. That really helps with um, glitter contamination. So your lines aren't going to have different colors mixed in. So you're just going to pull your tape every other one and then you're going to sprinkle your glitter on and with black is probably the only color I think I might have another one that I actually rub into the tape because it's basically a white background and typically when we do black cups we're going to spray our cup black but this one you can't really do that with. I mean, you can paint it if you want to, but I'm just, I don't really worry about that. So I'll just rub the black glitter into the tape as best I can. Just to make sure it's really stuck on there good. And then I will take my paintbrush, <clears throat> it's just a cheap one I got at Walmart, and then just brush the glitter off. And then you're ready to move on to your next color. <clears throat> So the next color that I'm going to do is pink. So that's why I did the black first. Because if I did the pink first and then tried to sprinkle black glitter, then the pink would have black pieces in it. Hmm. So as you're pulling the tape off, just kind of... And pick a pattern, you know. Serape isn't, you know, a perfect pattern. It's kind of, mm, kind of reminds me of like color blocking a little bit. Mm. 
So with every color now, I will pour the color back into the jar and then I will brush the rest of the colors onto the paper below because it will be contaminated because other glitter colors will come off and I try to keep my glitter not contaminated in the jar. Most of the time it doesn't happen, but I try. And we're basically just going to do this all the way down the cup. So you're just going to peel your tape off and sprinkle the glitter on. So I sped this up a little bit just because, just to save time. I know y'all get the gist of it. And you will see from the videos, um, like the color after this orange, so the orange and the very light mint color, I do last because those are the whitest colors that I use. So I try to keep those from getting contaminated because I don't want to accidentally pour a darker color on top of it and then have to go back and do touch-ups with Mod Podge or any of that. It's just easier. I just save the space where the lighter color would go and then I go back and do that at the very end. And I do encourage you guys to, you know, pick your own colors that you want to use. That's one reason why I don't say what glitter colors I use a lot. Um, because I've had people that copy the cup exactly like mine. And I really like to encourage you guys to make something your own. So come up with your own color pattern or, you know, use pastel colors or neon colors or... Maybe do one with all greens or all pinks. Like the possibilities are endless with Serape prints. So now you can see I'm going back in and doing the lighter colors that I did not do before. And you'll also see, so the very bottom is not double-sided tape. So I just do that with clear spray. I just spray the bottom in that one little area and um, just sprinkle it with the glitter. So once you spray seal everything really good and it has dried, we are going to spray at an angle and sprinkle on the white glitter for the cow print. I use um, Rust-Oleum Clear Spray. I, gloss, matte, semi-gloss, it doesn't really matter. So once you spray it on there, you're just going to sprinkle the white glitter on. And I do this a couple times because it's white, so it might take a few times to um, get good coverage. But each time I spray a little bit more on the Serape because I want the edges to be more faded than the middle. Just to get that faded look. So I usually do it three times. I might go back and touch up certain spots that may need a little bit more fade or a little bit more coverage. So once you spray seal everything, it's time to do the brown. Um, I usually use Mod Podge, but the quick coat was just sitting here. So I decided to try that. And I do like it. Um, 
It also saves time because with Mod Podge, you have to wait what seems like forever for it to dry. And with Quick Coat, you know, you're good to go in like 20, 30 minutes. So I just poured my Quick Coat in a little cup. And I just start kind of dabbing the cup where I want the cow print. And, you know, don't beat yourself up about this. It's not, um, you know, there's no real pattern that you need to go to. I like to just look at what cow print looks like and um, just kind of try to recreate that. So I do put a good layer on like the bulk of the cup where it's really white. And then when you get to the ends, you just lightly brush it with the quick coat or the Mod Podge or whatever you want to use because you still want that part of the design to be faded so it matches the white that's already on there. And then I just kind of sprinkle it down the cup. If you let the glitter fall down the cup, it really does help with that faded effect. And then you can go back and touch up if you need to. And that I will say with the quick coat, it was a little bit harder to see where I was putting it. Um, but I did try this again. And if you tint it with brown or black or whatever color you're using, um, it does help a lot. So you can see where you place it better. So that is one side. And now we are just going to do the same thing to the other side. And then I do a little bit on the bottom and I dab a few spots in the center, just kind of random spots. And so once this is dried, I spray seal and epoxy a couple times, dremel my tops and bottoms, and then add the vinyl if I need to, and then epoxy a final time. And that is it. I hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks for watching.